Well, I hope I got that camera back in the same spot. I am in the process of tooling this bad boy. And I guess I'd show some of y'all the first couple of steps at least without getting too long. First I use, after I do all my swivel cuts, I come in with an old craft tool with an F902. What that does is it's just a little bitty point. That F stands for foliage. I don't even know if they make this anymore, to tell you the truth, but I'll come in and pink is what I call it. These spots where my knife cuts come together. What that does is lays that leather down good and tight so that in the future, it doesn't work its way up. Once I get all that done, then I come in and start doing, oh, um, I'll start with my undercuts. Basically that just kind of pushes the inside of these curves up on these vines here. See what I'm doing? I hope. Uh-oh, that light just went went dead on me. There you go. And I was so proud of that light, I figured it out. Uh, I can plug it in and charge it, but it's a snap-on. It's like an $80 light that I found underneath my truck one time because my mechanic left it there. That's how good that magnet works. And I thought, well, I can't put that magnet you know, down there on my leather because it'll have metal shavings on it. So I put it on top of this little bag I've got here that I use to hold things in place. And uh, it's got BBs on the inside. So that magnet picks up on them BBs and holds it in place. There you go, there's a little trick for all y'all. This is a Barry King beveler. I think he makes four different sizes. And I've got all four of them. I kind of wanted to do my vines first, but I don't want to be swapping back and forth with different tools. These, these are called undercutters, undercut bevelers. What they're doing is pushing that leather up. This is big, heavy, quarter inch thick skirting leather. So I can use the heavier. Oops. I see a place I missed. I hope y'all can see this. I, I think I need to get over a little bit, huh? Anyway. Okay, I think I got this side done with the big one. Now I can step down to the next smaller. Need a smaller one right there. And a small one right here. Ah, 
All right, there's a, it's probably the last one I'll need right here. Nope, oh, I gotta do that. This piece here is the, the cantle cover on the back side, back of the saddle. And this saddle is going to be what they call a pencil roll. So it's not going to have what they call the Cheyenne roll covering it. I started out planning this saddle. It was just going to be plain Jane. Let's hurry up, get it done so people can see what, what a wade looks like and everything but uh it just needed something else <laughs> so here i am doing all this tooling all right so there's that next step we'll do is start beveling which i'm not going to show you how to do all that that's pretty simple basic stuff again i've got some very keen tools that have different shapes to them this one I believe is a uh, concaved. So I can go over here like on these curves like that. Hit it once or twice instead of using a smaller one and ta 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 ta. But sometimes you gotta do that smaller one. So anyway, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna show you something else first before I cut you loose. I did this earlier. It's still drying. I don't want to run it underneath, <clears throat> excuse me, underneath the sewing machine until it's all the way dry. You, you can see a little wet right there. But I get it good and wet so that when I fold it over, it doesn't give me any grief. But that's that San Carlos thing we did earlier. All right, boys and girls, y'all go have a good evening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, like, subscribe, share, and all that other good stuff. Toodaloo, buggeroos. DavidMillsSaddlery.com.